Hello lovely people, I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe. In this Amigurumi tutorial, we will crochet this little bird here. It's a little wren called Winifred. And a little bird, a little wren that lives in my garden inspired me to crochet her. So yeah, my bird collection just keeps growing and growing, especially since I moved, there are many more different species in my garden, so I think my bird tutorials will never stop. <laughs> so, those of you who are not into birds, thank you for your patience. I try to mix it up <laughs> with other animals. But yeah, I just love them, so I have to keep making them. And yeah, thank you so much if you attended the crochet along yesterday. I'm recording this on Thursday, so it hasn't happened yet, but when you watch this, then it will have been yesterday, and I so appreciate you joining. It's always so lovely to crochet with you, especially live, because then we get to interact with each other live, and it's just nice knowing that we're all um, in our homes, but crocheting together, making the same little thing, so that's really lovely. And yeah, if you haven't um, joined me yesterday for the crochet along, then you can just watch the whole video. So don't worry, um, I recorded everything from the beginning because I figured if I record the um, like the second part of the bird, then I might as well record all of it. <laughs> so you just go ahead and continue with the video. Those of you who attended the crochet along, um, I'll put the timestamp of you know where we left off with the crochet along in the description box below, so you can click on that to continue where we left off from yesterday. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this little project or the whole project if you haven't started yet, if you're watching this at a later time. And so, yeah, enjoy! For this project we need DK or light worsted yarn as usual. And I'll be using Shapia Stone Washed, um, the regular the DK Stone Wash, not the XL one. And this shade is called Brown Agate, if I'm pronouncing this right. I'll link to it in the description box below. And then for the belly, I'll be using Rico Creative Rikurumi DK in, I believe this is Mastique. And for the beak, I'll use a tiny amount of the same yarn in Caramel. We need a 2.5 millimeter hook or a size um, C2 or B1. The 2.5 is something in between those two. And you, you'll definitely be able to use a C2 unless you tend to crochet very loosely, in which case I recommend you use a size B1, which is a 13 in UK terms, and the C2 is a size 12 in um, UK yarn hook. Um, crochet hook sizes. So then we'll be needing some fiber fill and safety eyes or black embroidery floss if you prefer to embroider the eyes. And these are four millimeters in diameter. Then we need a yarn needle, scissors, a stitch marker. And for the feet, unless you want to crochet the feet and hang your little bird up as an ornament, which is also a cute idea. Um, but if you want it to stand, then you'll need some craft wire. And I'll be using this one. It's a 0 0.8 millimeter thick, and we only need mm, maybe 20 centimeters, which is eight inches. Uh, maybe a little bit more just in case. Um, but not more than 30 centimeters, 12 inches. And if you have flat pliers like these, like small ones for jewelry or something similar, 
that is helpful for bending the feet into shape. But don't worry if you don't have them, probably um, craft wire this big should still be able to should still be you should still be able to bend it with the hands. So don't worry too much about this. So without further ado, let's get started. So we begin with the head. And so you can grab your main color yarn. And then we start with a magic ring. So just use your preferred magic ring method. And then in round one, we single crochet six in the magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's round one done. Then we can close the magic ring. With this yarn, you need to be careful because it's not, um, it's not pure cotton, and so it breaks easily. So you can't pull the yarn too tightly. Then in round two, we increase in all six stitches. I just use my index finger to get the hook in the first stitch. And then we increase, so two in here, one and two, and three and four in the next. Five and six. Seven and eight, nine and ten, and eleven and twelve. And then I'll close the magic ring a little more carefully because this yarn is not as robust as the yarn I usually use. So that's round two done. So I place my stitch marker here in the last stitch. And now, before we start round three, I'll make a loop in this beige color ready because we'll join the second color in round three. So I just made a slip knot to create this little loop to have it here so that it's ready when I need it. So we start round three with a single crochet and then we increase in the next stitch one and two and we repeat this four times all together so three more times single crochet and increase and single crochet and increase. That's three repetitions done. Now we single crochet one and in the next increase we change to beige. So the first single crochet of the increase is going to be in the main color still. And then the second single crochet of the increase, we pick up the main color yarn and pull it through. But then we pull the second color on our hook and pull it through the two main color loops. And now we continue in the second color. And while we do that, we crochet around the main color yarn. So the way I do this, I usually hold the yarn the same way I hold it anyway, but the, the yarn that I'm working with, it goes on top of my index finger and the one that's going to be worked into the stitches goes below my um, joint here. 
and then I hold both ends in place with my other fingers just to keep the tension. So I hope this helps. Maybe you have your own method of holding it that would that's great. Just in case it's the first time you're doing this. So what we do now, we continue with this series of stitches. So we have one single crochet in the next stitch, but we crochet around this main color yarn. So we insert our hook in the stitch, then go under the main color yarn to pick up the, well, I shouldn't say main color now, <laughs> under the brown yarn to pick up the beige yarn and pull it through underneath the brown. And then we can go over the brown yarn to pick up the beige and pull it through the two loops. Then in the next stitch we have a, an increase. So here we do the same, work around this. So pick up the beige yarn, pull it through the stitch from underneath the brown yarn and then go over the brown yarn to pick up the beige again. And one more stitch, one more single crochet in the same stitch. Then we have a single crochet in here and an increase in the last stitch. And with this, with the second single crochet of the increase, we change back to brown. So first we have a complete stitch in beige and the second single crochet that goes in here we change to brown. So we pick up the beige, pull it through, then pick up the brown and pull it through. And now you can see that the brown yarn was woven in here, so you can't see anything. It's worked into the stitches. Sometimes you can give it a little pull just to make sure that it doesn't come out in between the stitches. And that's round three done. So now we continue crocheting in brown and working in the beige yarn while we do that. So in round four, we start with 13 single crochet. In the 13th, we change back to beige. So first 12, we just do in brown. So this time we go through the next stitch Go underneath the beige, pick up the brown, put it through underneath the beige to put it through the stitch. And then we go over the beige to pick up the brown and pull it through the two loops. And we repeat this 12 times, 11 more times. That's two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now in the next single crochet we change to beige, so we pick up the brown yarn, pull it through, and then pick up the beige yarn and pull it through. And now beige goes on top again, and we crochet the brown yarn in, into our beige stitches. So now we should have five left, one, two, three, four, five. That's correct. And in the fifth one, we change back to brown. So one, two, three, and four. And then the last one, we change back to brown. So that's brown goes on top again. That's round four done. And in round five, we increase a little. 
So we start with one single crochet in the first stitch here, one increase in the next, and we do this six times. So five more times we repeat it, one single crochet, one increase, where's the second repetition, one single crochet, one increase, that's the third repetition. One single crochet, one increase, fourth repetition, one single crochet, one increase, that's the fifth repetition. And Again, one single crochet, one increase, that's the sixth repetition, and now we single crochet two, and in the second one we change to beige, so one, and here we pick up the brown and then pick up the beige, and beige goes on top. And now we single crochet in the remaining four stitches in beige, but in the fourth one we change back to brown. So one, two, and three. And in the last stitch again we change to brown. And that's round five done. In round six, we keep increasing. So here, we start with two single crochet. One, and two. Then we increase in the next stitch. One and two in the same. And we repeat this again six times all together, so five more times. One, two, increase, one, two, increase, one, two, increase, one, two, increase, and once more, one, two, increase, and now we have again two single crochet, in the second we change to beige, so one and two, and now we single crochet in the remaining four stitches in beige, but in the last one we change to brown. So one, two, three, and with the last one we change to brown. And that's round six done, so now our round has 30 stitches. And in round seven, we keep increasing more. 
So we start with six single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we single crochet one more and increase in the next stitch one and two in the same and we repeat this five more times one single crochet one increase one single crochet one increase that's just two repetitions one single crochet one increase sometimes just pull the beige yarn a bit One, two, three, four repetitions. One single crochet, one increase. Repetition number five, and once more, one single crochet, and one increase. And now, we single crochet in the next eight stitches and in the eighth we change to beige. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in the next one, we change to beige. So pick up the brown, pull it through, and pick up the beige and pull it through. And again, we single crochet in the next four, changing to brown in the fourth. So one, two, three, and then change back to brown in the next. So brown goes on top and that's round seven done. So now our round has 36 stitches. So we're done increasing. In round eight, we start with 32 single crochet in brown. In the 32nd, we change to beige. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, Just pulling the page a bit, 25, 
27, 28, 29, oops, 30, 31, and now in the 32nd we change to beige. So beige goes on top. And again, we single crochet in the next, in the last four stitches in beige, changing to brown in the last. So that's one, two, three, and four. So brown goes back on top, and this is round eight done. Now in round nine, we will crochet a little opening out of which we can then crochet the tail. So we start with 12 single crochet. And let me just see, I think we don't need the beige anymore. Um, yeah, we won't need it. I'll uh, crochet in maybe the next eight stitches just to kind of weave it in so that it's secured. But then we can fasten it off. So for the next eight stitches, we still crochet around it. Eight single crochet, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, and now I'm just cutting this off. And we have four more to go, so nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So now it really depends on where you are here, so um we need to chain six and skip six stitches but these six stitches that we skip they should be in the back of the bird so this is let's place the stitch marker here just for a moment too because this represents the center front and then on the opposite side that's where we want the Tail to go. So now we can see one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So from here to here, and that's maybe not the right placement for me this time. It was with the first version. So maybe I need to shift everything one stitch toward the left, if you know what I mean, because now. This stitch marker is pointing toward the center front and this, these six stitches are not completely aligned with it. So if I move one stitch to the left here and here, it looks much better. It looks much more aligned with this stitch marker. So this is probably the center back for me. So what I'll do is I single crochet one more and then I just deduct this stitch in the end. And 
and this one goes back into the last stitch just so I don't get confused. So now for you you may need to add more stitches or you may need to make less. The main important thing is that the six stitches you skip now are in the center back of your little bird. So we chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we skip six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and in the seventh we single crochet. So I would have had 18 single crochet to go but because I added one extra single crochet here I only have 17 left including this one so that's one and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and 17 so that worked out nicely that's the round done so now you can check and just make sure that it's really in the back center this opening it's looking good to me so in round 10 all we do is single crochet in all 36 stitches so here in the chains we're crocheting the back loops of those and let's just do it together so you can see. Not counting because for you it may be different, different placement of this opening. So let's just crochet one in each stitch, single crochet one in each stitch. And then I go through the back loops of the chains. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and this way I have the front loops open to crochet the tail out of those later on and then we just single crochet in the remaining stitches of the round one in each So that's round 10 done and then round 11 we start decreasing. 
So we single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And then we make an invisible decrease. So we go in the front loop of the next stitch, pull our loop down to go in the front loop of the next stitch, pick up the yarn, pull it through the two front loops, then pick up the yarn and pull it through the two remaining loops. And we repeat this series of stitches six times altogether. So five more times for a single crochet. One, two, three, four, and then decrease. One, two, three, four, decrease, one, Two, three, four, decrease, one, two, three, four, decrease. And once more, one, two, three, four, and decrease. So now we should be down, back down to 30 stitches. And in the next round, we keep decreasing. So in round 12, we single crochet in the next three. One, two, three, and then we decrease. And once again, we repeat this six times all together. So that's the second time, one, two, three, decrease, that was the third time, one, two, three, There was a fourth time. One, two, three. Decrease. That's the fifth repetition. So once more. One, two, three. and decrease. And that's round 12 done. Our round has 24 stitches now and now I'm going to secure my stitch because next we can attach the safety eyes. If you're embroidering the eyes you can still do it later or now whichever way you prefer but with safety eyes, you definitely want to attach them now. The beak I'm going to do later. Because sometimes, sometimes I already do the beak like in the middle of the project, like now. But I find that sometimes it gets messed up <laughs> while I crochet. And yeah, it saves more in shape when I do it last, I found. So that's what I'm doing this time. And the safety eyes, 
Of course, you can attach them anywhere you like, but I'm going to place them between round three and four. So one, two, three, somewhere here. No, this is this is three, I think. Three and four, so somewhere here. Somewhere next to this page. Maybe there, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. There. You can play around with it a little bit. Apparently last time I had eight stitches. Space in between, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, in round four, it's eight stitches. In round seven, it's seven, uh, in round three, it's seven stitches. Let me just compare with my first little bird. Yeah, I think that's looking good. There's a little space between the beige and the eye. So I want to do it the same way again. So now I'm going to secure them. And then we can start filling our little bird with fiber fill. Okay, so they should be nicely secured now. So I'm just going to start filling now. Not too much though, because we can still add more fiber fill later. I think this is enough for now. So we can continue with round 13, in which we will decrease more. So This time we single crochet in the next two stitches. One and two, and then decrease. And again, we do this six times all together. So five more times, single crochet one, two, and decrease. So that's round 13 done and our round has 18 stitches now. I'll just add a little more fiber fill after each round from now on. We can still add more through this opening there so I'm not too worried about it. Getting all of it now. So in round 14 we continue decreasing and this time we single crochet one. And 
and then we decrease one. And again, we repeat this six times all together and single crochet. One, decrease. And that's round 14 done. So we only have one more round to go before we start that. I'll put a little more fiber fill. Oops. Rest. I'll add through this opening if necessary. I'll just make sure that the front is nicely stuffed now. And now, in the last round, all we do is make six decreases in a row. So I'm just going to squish the little birdie together because that helps get the hook in the front loops only. It's one decrease. Two. Four. Five. And Six. So here we can fasten off. And now we'll close this last round. So we need our yarn needle. And then we insert our needle in the front loops of all six stitches of the last round. And just pull them through without pulling them too tightly just yet. That's three, four, five, and six. And now if you're not using cotton yarn, like me, then you need to be careful because the yarn may break. So carefully pull it tight to close the round will look like this that's fine because now we go through the center of it and stitch through anywhere pull tight again to even this out so that we don't have don't have a bump there and this gets better if we add more fiber fill again through this opening here and then we just secure the yarn in by weaving it in with a few stitches. So I just try to follow the single crochet pattern 
to make it not too obvious. And then just cut this short. And that's our little birdie with the body already done. <laughs> so, can't wait to add the beak, that will make it look much more birdie like. <laughs> so, I'm wondering maybe I add more fiber fill already before we start with the tail. Sorry if it was too much. I think that's okay. I don't want to overfill it because now we're going to crochet the tail out of this opening and that's going to be difficult if there is too much fiber fill around here. So now we rejoin the yarn at the opening and I'm going to do that here at the left side between round um, 8 and 9 so I just go through here and that's where I just pull a loop out so I just grab this yarn and pull it through so that I have a loop and that's why you don't want to overfill I have done so it seems <laughs> so try not to work the fiber fill in your stitches remove some if necessary I try to just work with it now so now we have this loop here on the side and now we can crochet all around we are going to crochet 14 stitches all together so first we have these stitches here so that's going to be easy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so we single crochet in all 6 stitches 1 Two, three, four, five, and six, and then We single crochet one in between around eight and nine. So I'm just gonna go here through this spot to catch a loop and to make one single crochet there. And now we single crochet in the six front loops of the chains that we made. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this here should be the first one. Mm, the first one seems tricky. There we go. <laughs> so one, two, three, four. Five and six and now we just make one more single crochet here where we join the yarn between round eight and nine again on this side and that makes 14 single crochet so here we can place our stitch marker because that's the end of the round and now 
In round two, we already start decreasing. So we make one decrease. Or actually, no, let's flip this around. Let's make five single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and then we decrease. So, go in the front loop of the next stage and the Round loop of the next and single crochet both front loops together and then we repeat this so five single crochet one two three oops four And five, and decrease, and that's the round done. So now around is 12 stitches. Now I'm just going to go ahead and hide this yarn end that we joined in the body. And I'm also going to add more fiber fill. We don't need to stuff the tail that we want to be flat, but we can use this opening to squish in more fiber fill so that the back of the body is also nicely filled. Back at the bottom. We continue decreasing. So now we single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, four, and then we decrease. And we repeat this once more, so four single crochet, one, two, three, four, and decrease. So now our round has 10 stitches and in round four, we single crochet in all 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then in round five, we decrease a little again. 
so this time we start with the decrease and we single crochet three one two three and again decrease and single crochet in the remaining three stitches one two and three so now our round has eight stitches and in round six we simply single crochet in all eight one two three four five six seven and eight and now we only have one round to go in which we start with a decrease oops here we go then we have two single crochet and one decrease and two single crochet so now we can fasten off and as we did here we're going to close this little round so we need our yarn needle and then we go through the front loops of all six stitches without pulling the yarn too tightly not yet anyway then we can pull tight being careful not to break the yarn Then we can go through the center of this last round and stitch through to wherever we want to weave in this yarn end. that short and let's do the tail down <laughs> so now we can crochet the wings both wings are crocheted the same way we begin with a 30 centimeter 12 inch long yarn tail because that's what we will use to sew the wings on and they are crocheted in rows so we start by making a little loop and then we chain two one and two and we start with row one in which we increase in this little chain there so 
we can chain from our hook one and two then we chain one and turn now we increase in both these stitches so two single crochet in here and two single crochet in here chain one oops, and turn in row three to five the next three ro rows we just single crochet one in each one two three and four chain one and turn that was one row one two three four chain one and turn that was two rows one two three four and that was the third row chain one and turn now in row six we single crochet one then we skip one and single crochet in the remaining two one and two chain one and turn in the next row we skip one and single crochet two chain one and turn then we single crochet two chain one and turn skip one and single crochet in the next oops chain one and turn and then we single crochet one in the only stitch that we have left and that's row 10 done so now what we do is we crochet all around the little wing so we start by making another single crochet in the same stitch and then we single crochet in the side of each row so you can see that there will be a gap for each side of the row so and this here is the next one I think it doesn't really matter it doesn't if it doesn't have to be the correct place we just want 10 single crochet until we get there so the first I did this is two then three four five six seven eight nine and ten just gonna stretch it a little bit and then we make one single crochet here on top and then nine single crochet back down the side here so one goes in here two three four five six seven eight and nine so now we crochet all the all around the wing you can stretch it a little bit 
and then we fasten off with an invisible finish. You don't need a very long yarn end because we use the other yarn end to sew the wing on. And so it's actually not a real invisible finish that we do. We we just cheat another stitch in there. So we go in the first stitch, pull that through, and then we go through the front and back loop of the last stitch that we made. And this way it looks as if there was another stitch. Kind of. <laughs> so then we just weave this in on the back of the wing. Maybe somewhere higher up the wing because that's going to be hidden, that part when we sew on the wing. So I just go through here. And then we can just cut this short. And that's our wing done. To crochet the second one, you can just rewatch this part. Um, I'm gonna put the minute that you can go back to here, but you can also open the description box and click on the tip clickable timestamp for the second wing. So my two wings are done now. And I'm going to attach them. In this direction, so that there are like, maybe, let's see how I did it here. Yeah, so the tail is going to point upward and the wings are going to point a little downward to the back but slightly downward and I'm just going to leave about two rounds space between the eyes and then I don't want the wing to come you know I want it to kind of align with the eyes so that it doesn't uh, that it won't be more toward the front and closer to the front than the eyes if you know what I mean so yeah something like this I didn't bring enough pins I think although I'm gonna use this crooked one here it's fine <laughs> just to hold it in place and then I'll just attach the, the upper half of the wing or maybe not even half of it. So I'll remove this actually for now. So I'll just go through the body, just try to make small stitches. And then through one of the stitches of the wing. I usually go from above downward, but you can do it the other way around. Um, then again, small stitch through the body. I just try to make the stitches as small as possible. So I'm trying to stitch as close to the where the wing goes as possible.
Oops. I think I don't need the pen anymore. It's more hindering than anything. So we're stitching through here. Oh, from went from the top down. So let's keep it this way. Okay, I'll do a few more stitches on this side. Maybe one more stitch on this side. Um, then I'll stitch through to the other side. So now I just need to know where I want this spot here. It's a good spot for the other side of the wing. And now I just go back to what the top, oops, stitch through the next stitch from the top down. You just need to allow enough space for the wing to go, otherwise it's not going to lay flat. Just a few more stitches to go. Last stitch through the wing. And now I'm just going underneath the wing. Here we can then ribbon the yarn in, but I'll leave it for now because later I'll use it to tie the um, the yarn in for the beacon place. So I'll keep it this way for now. And that's one wing attached. So there's almost like a 45 degree angle in between the tail and the wing. Could have been less, but that's how it turned out, and I think I'm happy with that because the, the tail is going to point upward anyway. So now we just repeat this on the other side. Just make sure to pin it in place first so that you can be sure of the placement. Maybe we can do this part together. Just to repeat, um, so I left two rounds from the eye. And I didn't want the wing to go further forward than the eye. So that's kind of the placement I'm going for. And then there was like a almost 45 degree angle here. So something like this. <laughs> and then 
just go around and attach the back just halfway, then stitch through to the front and go up the front of the wing. And the lower part of the wing just stays open. So I just I've just sewn on the second wing. And again I left the yarn end here because we can use this later to attach the beak. And the beak is what we're going to crochet next. So we just start with a long enough yarn end to attach the beak, with this, which doesn't have to be that long. Maybe 20 centimeters, 8 inches. And then I just make a little loop. And then we chain two, and I try to chain make um, quite small chains. One of you lovelies told me that um, he was struggling with making the beak for I think my little bird pattern. So I hope um, I can make it more clear this time. Since then I made many beaks, so maybe now I have some better tricks. So one is that the chains should be quite small. So trying to crochet quite tightly and then in the second chain we just make one single crochet in that one also I try to crochet very tightly so then we fasten off already And then to make it look more beak-like, we always squeeze it a bit to make it more into the triangle shape. And I'll repeat that once we attached it. But yeah, if it looks weird for some reason, maybe using a smaller hook will help. Usually that's what I do for tricky parts when I um, Use other designers' patterns or some something, and it uh, just um, just doesn't turn out right um, because it's too big or looks kind of clumsy. Then um, usually using a smaller size hook helps me. So the beak is gonna go in between the eyes. So in between round three and four. So we just attach both sides so if this is the center then we want one side to go here and one here so I'm starting with this side and now I stitch through to this other yarn end here that we left here from the wing not exactly through the same like I stitch through close to it but I don't want to come out of the same spot because we want to tie these two together in a bit so I just go through here and leave it and then here one stitch to the left oops that's where we'll attach the other side so now I'm threading this on my yarn needle and with this yarn needle I stitch through now to the other side close to the yarn and that's left from the wing just making sure that it's centered which I think it is and now we can Pull this tight again and then tie these two together because they're going to be hidden under the wing. Just make a double knot here and then I just cut these short and then the wing goes on top. Now the other side again pulling that tight. We 
this one actually because I was very careful with making small chains and stitches. That one doesn't even need shaping, so I think that helps. That's the best um, way. Just making very small stitches, and if it still doesn't look right, using a smaller size hook should work, I think. Oh, that's also going to be in under the wing and that's a little peek done <laughs> so now all that's left to do are the legs so we will need a piece of wire I never measure but Something maybe ten inches. Let's see, I have a ruler here, so yeah, that's oh well, it's actually almost twelve inches. Thirty centimeters, and we probably won't need all of it, but um I'm always trying not to waste much, but with this it's a bit annoying if it's too small, so. And I always keep any scraps for jewelry or these kind of things. So unless it's very sturdy, your craft wire, you may want to... Um, Thread it on your yarn needle if it has a large enough eye. And now we go through the center here. Yeah, so the last, between the last round. So from this spot to this, from side to side. Just go through with this craft wire and then you can lose the yarn needle and just find the center of it and then we can pull these down and the center should be lined with the center of the bird more or less. So now we can just start with one leg, I'm just leaving this one there, and about two centimeters, which is 0 0.8 inches, and again I'm not measuring, I'm just guessing here, so, well it's probably more like one inch, going down. Then I bend the wire forward to form the first little toe. I start with the inner toes um, and work my way outward. So then at about one centimeter or more, it's probably like a half an inch, I bend the wire backward. And here we have the first little toe. Then at the, the same spot here, I bend it back forward. And then th this is going to be the middle toe <laughs> so this one I leave a little bit longer and I bend it toward the back again and here at the heel so to speak I just bend it back forward and for the third toe I bend it back 
again this one I made smaller than like the first one and now we make a little toe that's pointing backwards so I'm just aligning that with the middle toe here and again at about one centimeter 0.4 inches or or let's say half an inch a little bit longer I bend it back forward and here you can cut it off already or if you prefer you can wrap this part around the leg to make the to reinforce the leg now I'm not that good with wire wrapping so I'll just cut it off here and you can do this with household scissors you don't need such a tool and that's the first foot done so now we just repeat all of this with the other side just making sure the leg is long enough you can even if you someone did this with the with the little robin that I made I was very impressed anyway the, the legs and feet they looked so amazing she even bent it forward like so looks more realistic <laughs> so now we do the second leg so that one should be pointing downward or upward in this case because our bird is upside down and then on this side I also make a little bend in the leg and then I just try to start the feet at the same length so just bending this forward and now again I work my way around from starting with the inner toe so at about half an inch I bend it backward and you can use your fingers so you can just bend it this way that should work as well bend it back forward and then the middle toe again I leave it a little bit longer Bend it back forward to shape the third toe. And then again half an inch for the third toe. And then we just make the little backward pointing toe. And cut it off here. And that's the little feet done. So stands <laughs> if for any reason it doesn't stand with the feet being flexible what I do is I um, make sure that the feet are at the, the legs are at the right angle and then I place 
just a drop of glue on each um, beginning of the leg here where the wire comes out of the amigurumi and just let it dry this way and this usually does the trick so then because then they don't move around anymore it makes everything more stable but this one seems to be standing already with its little tail in the air <laughs> so that's our little bird done Thank you so, so much for crocheting along with me. Thank you to those of you who attended the crochet long yesterday. When I'm recording this, it's um, actually Thursday, so it hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure it's going to be so much fun. And yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a big thumbs up for me. That would be so lovely. And share your creations on Instagram and Facebook with me. Make sure to tag me at Stella's Yarn Universe. Um, if you tag me in the photo, even better, because then I won't miss it, even if I don't log on social media every day. And yeah, also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of my future Amigurumi tutorials. Thank you so, so much for crushing along with me again. Thanks for being here. See you next week. And until then, happy crocheting. Bye.